Hi everyone and welcome to the third videos in this video series. So in the previous videos we prepared the master, we've made the mold, we had the little errors with the mold and how I fixed them. And in this video I'll talk you a bit more about the making of the top shell of the RTM mold. So in the next video we'll do a bit more about the RTM technique on its own, but now it's all about the preparations of making the top half. So a big advantage of having RTM molds is that you don't need a vacuum bag anymore, so you can just lay your fibers down and put the top shell on top of it and infuse the parts. Um, but to get to this step, we first have to make like a first part. And in this, like in the first video, I've measured a lot. And it was with a reason because I knew that I was able to get two equal parts out of the width of one carbon fiber roll. Because this part will be used mainly for doing some samples, um, showing like different, different materials. And it's always easy, like if possible, to think a bit ahead just to make it more possible to have less waste into your layup and so on. So I was able to cut it in a measurement of 50 on 75 centimeters. And that way I was able to use two layers out of one linear meter. So 0 0.75 meters. So a good way is to apply it um, on the positive parts because it's easier to like stretch it out and make it even. So this might be a little trick you didn't know. And then you can put it into the mold with the shape, like pressing it a bit into the mold. And that way you're sure you don't have fibers falling in between your um, carbon fiber and the mold. So that would give like a mark when you unmold the, mar uh, the parts out of the mold. So here it is positioned into the mold. And then you can add the second layer. So I will use two layers, will give me about uh, 1.3 millimeters of thickness for the parts. And then you can just apply a bit of spray glue. Like I mention it like a bit, because sometimes when I see people having troubles with the finish on their parts, it's mostly because they use too much uh, spray. Never use it directly onto your mold, use it in between your layers and just like a small mist because it leaves some residue. If you have some bridging into your parts that will fill up, fill up with epoxy resin, the resin will be like a bit of a bluish white milky tint. So that's not what you want. So the less you use, the better. So the next phase would be to apply the peel ply. So this will give a nice rough finish on the inside of the part, uh, making it easier to bond uh, any other materials you want to bond onto the back of the part. Uh, also, it will be make it possible to remove all the vacuum supply coming on top. So that being a perforated film, and then I've used a 3D knitted infusion mesh because it will lay down easier in these kind of shapes. And here in this shot, what I'm trying to explain is on the infusion side, so you'll see the mesh, like the infusion mesh, coming on top of the flange and then on the other side, the vacuum side, it will be more inside the park, inside the part, making like a resin break during your infusion. So you'll see that later on in the video while the infusion is running. So then you apply the vacuum back and then you can just pull full vacuum once you're like happy with the results. Here's a small shot. So I wouldn't go into much detail. You can pause the video if you want to see my measurements and calculations, but I'm going to make 520 grams of infusion resin. So I'm using the IN2 epoxy resin from Easy Composites. The good thing is you can like make your own mixture with the fast and slow harner. The more fast you add, obviously the faster it will cure, but you just want to have enough time to make a full infusion, like going into a good flow, uh, not too fast. And that's why I've made a ratio of around 80 grams of slow hardener and 40 grams of fast hardener. So making it a two to one ratio uh, in between the hardeners. So an important thing is like infusions uh, might seem easy, but there's a, there's a lot of experience going into it, uh, mostly like practical in, um 
like practical reasoning and uh, experience uh, the more you do it the better you get the better you understand what's happening uh, the most important thing is while sometimes people have pinholes and such is because the infusion lines and vacuum lines aren't well aligned leaving some dry spots or mostly because an infusion is running too fast so you want to throttle in between the speeds uh, sometimes it's like a little game sometimes you want to slow it a bit down and then make it go a bit faster um, and here you can see the importance of the resin break as well so it will slow the resin at the end making it possible to saturate any unsaturated fibers that are still behind the resin front so as you can see here my calculations were quite good so um, I was left with a bit of resin. Mostly the first infusion is the most difficult one because you don't know how much resin you will use. But once you have everything measured out, uh, it's just rinse and repeat every time you're making the part. So here I'm removing the peel ply, the perforated release film in between the peel ply and the infusion mesh was easier to remove thanks to that perforated. Uh, film in between and here you have the result. So this is the first part. So this is a good part. Nice gloss mold worked uh, We had no leaks in the mold and We'll be using this as like creating the thickness in between the mold and the top mold So the mold we'll be making today. So I was aiming for like 1.5 millimeters This is like a, a good way uh, to do various samples with fibers uh, but very important is now to finish the back side of the part as well because we want to have like a glossy finish on the mold side like the, the mold we made in a previous video and the mold that we'll be making today so here it's all about adding the pattern primer again I've used the pattern primer in the first video to make the plug like the, the, the original parts and now I'm using it again on the inside so now I'm just trimming the sides I'm leaving a little bit of um, fabric like cured um, flange here because this will be in the uh, layup of the part later on as well in this mold so I've just sanded it it's fully flat so the first layer was applied and then I went all the way back to like the carbon fiber uh, making that the peel ply finish was removed and any imperfections was filled as well. So when sanded, now I'm using the spray gun again to have like an even coat because it's easier to spray an even coat than brushing it on. And then as you can see, it's very easy to sand down. So I'm using wet and dry sanding just to have like a good result. This isn't like the most important thing because it's the back of the part, but it's always better to have like a a regular okay finish so I've went till 400 grit I think and then polished it up and then we have a good back of the part so now once again applying release agents on the part as well because I don't want the part to get stuck if some polyester resin will seep under um, during the making of this top mold and then I'm using wax strips so another way to make like your first part would be to apply some wax strips into the mold with a thickness of like here uh, one millimeter but it's quite difficult on complex shapes to add wax and also like it's a problem I still have is that the wax is always sticking to the polyester resin even after using some release agents so you'll see that later on in the video if some of you have some solutions for that let me know in the comments so I'm taping off everything that I don't want to have gel coat on because we'll be using a gel coat um, as well on the inside but just on like the car part so the area of the car there will be some gel coats just to have a nice uh, pinhole free finish on the inside so I'm using some um, gel coat polyester gel coat so it might be confusing it looks orange if you spray it into a mold and then apply your carbon fiber and infuse it it will be totally clear but on a thicker volume like in the cup with 200 grams it might seem like a bit orange but what I want to do is create a red inside so I've added some red tinting pigment just to be sure that I can see how thick it is applied and evenly applied all over the part so here you can see it still some orange peels not too bad because the surface on the inside will be totally flat flat it's just the back that has an orange peel but it will get filled with polyester resin as you can see here so i'm using general laminating 
um, resin, polyester resin here. I didn't use the tooling system because I still want to see through the part. So this is a translucent, it's like a bit greenish uh, polyester resin, but it will allow me to see the infusion running under the RTM mold. So this is still transparent. So general rule is this is a quite cheap resin, but it might have some shrink, it might overheat. So you only apply a few resins, uh, a few coats of resin at a time. So you only apply it in thin coats to avoid overheating, so an exothermal reaction. Um, but it will also allow you to add a bit more hardener and on a day you could add two or three layers in one go, but you let it go like in a green state or fully cure, fully cure and sand in between. So I'm using the roller again, so it's very important to use this tool to have like a nice full coverage, even dispersion of the resin, and then you'll get like in general good results. So here I'm preparing the strips. So for RTM molding, you'll need like an outer chamber with vacuum, like creating the suction of the RTM molds being stuck on the, the mold. And then there's the inner chamber making like the vacuum on the fibers that you'll infuse. So this is the outer chamber. So I'm using some PU18 and then I bought the rubber strips online. Um, or there, is this like the, the perfect type of seal? I'm still looking for maybe a better seal. Uh, so far I went with this one, but this is like the first time I'm doing this. You'll follow the videos like I was making it. So for the first time, this was not rehearsed or prepared in advance. So um, normally it should work, but some fine tuning might happen in the future. So by experience or knowing what I like and don't like about the system, I'll be able to improve everything and probably up, like update you on this YouTube channel as well. So if you might want to see that in the future, make sure to subscribe. So I've removed the parts, trimmed the edges. So this is like the most important part on the inside. Then we have the chamber on the outside. Uh, vacuum is pulled down just to make sure that um, the mold being now is in a vacuum state, so when it's pulled down. And then I'm just applying some extra reinforcements on the side. So you do this slowly, you let it cure in between into a green state or fully hardened. Like here, it was in a fully hardened state and then I've sanded it in between. And now I'm adding some extra reinforcements being Soric Core Mat that will let, like add a little bit of more material in one go. So you don't have to apply five, six coats of fiberglass and you can just go in one strip uh, backed on top and below with some fiberglass. So the thickness will add some st uh, like some stiffness because this vacuum chamber, like if you're minus one bar, it's, it's quite a good amount of force that might tear like the frame that I've made before uh, apart. So here we have it all finished. So um, now it's just waiting to cure and then the vacuum can be removed and then we can remove like the mold. Um, I've added a fan here just to make sure that the resin won't, won't overheat because like adding this much of materials, especially with Soric, um, it might go into an exothermal reaction. I was doing this during the summer, so it was quite hot and I've seen some burn mark like little marks coming up because of an exothermal reaction. This will also cause some shrinkage and that's the least you want on that top mold. So I finished the entire uh, mold right here. I'm removing it. So I've used some filleting wax to create like a good seal because I still had some leaks. Um, and that's still something that needs to be fixed, but this is like the easiest fix of, um, of this mold. So here we can see it. Um, being demolded. So we still have the parts onto the, the mold that is below it. Um, till now, as you might have noticed, I've added some resin channels with the wax, but no in and outlets were placed till now. So I did this because it's easier to make a mold like flat because these are quite difficult shapes to go around. And then I just added, added them 
at the end so this is why i did it this way you can also include them from the start uh, for me this is personally the best way to do it so i've added them on top and then i can drill all the way through so i'm just adding like a, a last layer of i would call it more cosmetic because like the the flatter the surface is the better you can see through it um, and here you can see it's like the wax is quite difficult to remove so this is like a struggle I had. I found a solution by using the mold cleaner that softens the wax, but it's still an annoying thing to, to remove. But by removing it, we now have a channel of one millimeter extra. So all around the part, um, I'll still have to figure out if I'll be infusing from the sides. So the, para the parameter around the, the car shape or from the inside, probably from the outside in. Uh, but this is still, still something I need to figure out um, as by now like I haven't even tried the part so this will be an adventure uh, we'll go through along together so I'm just drilling out the holes now so this will be the infusion or in, um, or vacuum side and then we are close to ready finishing this mold so this will be the the inlet or the outlet and now it's just again you just add some release agents and we are ready to make some parts so i hope you like this video i don't have some footage for the next video because it hasn't been recorded yet um, and i hope to see you in the next one so thanks for watching don't forget don't forget to subscribe leave a like and see you guys in the next one thanks for watching